Code to Enhance Learning presents the CEL video series for creating apps in Thunkable. Through this video series, we aim to introduce you to the world of creating your own apps through platforms like Thunkable. Hello everyone. This is Ayush and I'm excited to see you all today. As you all know, I love coding and I am a regular participant at CEL Hackathon. I will be your host for today. Welcome to the 8th episode of the series Space Game. Over the last two episode, we learned how to build a complete business app. Who doesn't love video games? Did you know there are some really cool benefits of playing video games? It improves your reading, eye-hand coordination, and problem-solving skills. In a digital world, it helps in building social connections as well. Video games enhance imaginative play and creativity. Not only that, there are very lucrative video gaming careers as well. This gives us a very good reason to build our very own video game, right? So let's explore further. Today, we will make a very cool space game with eye-catching characters. Let us look at the demo of the project. Our aim is to move the spaceship left or right and dodge the following meteors. When the game loads, we click the start button. The meteor appears and starts falling downwards. The green arrows move the spaceship and the red button stops the spaceship. The spaceship collides with the meteor. The game is over. After 3 seconds, the start button reappears to start the game again. This is how our game should work. Let us start by designing the prototype of the app. Before making it unthinkable, we will create a draft in a notebook. I have used the canvas component as a background to add all my sprites. The start sprite appears on the screen, allowing us to start the game. The spaceship sprite moves left and right on the canvas. The arrows in the square at the bottom are sprites to move or stop the spaceship. The meteor sprite falls towards the spaceship in the game. If the spaceship collides with the meteor, the game over sprite appears. This brings us to task 1. Pause here and create a prototype of the space game in your notebook. You can build on the idea that is shown to you by adding features of your own. After making the draft, I have designed the app like this in Thunkable. Let us look at this in detail. Before we design our screen, we need to know about the canvas component. The canvas component is a touch sensitive panel that enables the movement of items. You can use this component to create a variety of games and experiences that involve different methods of touching the screen. The stage is the background of your canvas. You can set a background color or a background image, a border color and the stage is height and width. You can click and drag your sprites on the stage in the canvas tab. Sprites are images that can be placed on the stage in the canvas. They can react to being touched or dragged across the screen or collide with other sprites or the edge of the screen. A sprite type is a category of sprites that you can add to your app. For example, in a video game, you might have a main character sprite type and obstacle sprite type. A sprite is a single instance of a sprite type. In the video game example, you could have a single obstacle sprite type but multiple obstacle sprites in your game. They could be multiple sprites of the same sprite type. First, I drag the canvas component onto the screen and make it big to cover the screen. Then, I click on stage. Here, I will change the canvas background color to dark blue. Next, I will delete the default sprite type and then add my own sprite type by clicking the add sprite type button. A sprite type 
is a category of sprites that you can add to your app. I will now change the image of the sprite type by uploading my own image. The images I am using in the project can be found in the resources folder link in the video description for you to download. I will now rename the sprite type to start. Now we will add another sprite type for the ship. I will change the image to ship and then rename the sprite type to ship. Similarly, I will add sprite types for the left, right and stop buttons, the meteor and the game over. Once done, the sprite types will look like this. Now we will create sprites from the sprite types. A sprite is a single instance of a sprite type. I will drag the start sprite onto the stage and rename the sprite to start. Next, I will drag the ship sprite type onto the stage and rename it to ship. Similarly, I will add sprites for all other sprite types except the meteor. For the meteor, the sprite will be created when we code the project. The stage will look like this when all sprites are added. This brings us to task 2. Create the design of the app in Thunkable as per your prototype. Add the canvas element and add sprite types and sprites. Now that we have an appealing design for our game, let us move on to the blocks panel for the coding part. As you saw in the design view, the game over is still showing on the screen, so we need to hide it when the canvas loads. Next, we will need to program the ship to move left, right and pause. When we click the left arrow, the ship moves left. We do this by setting the ship's X coordinate speed to negative 150. Similarly, to move the ship right, we need to set the X coordinate speed to positive 150. And to stop the ship, we set it to 0. Once we have coded our ship's movements, we will be starting our game by pressing the start button. When start button is clicked, firstly, we will hide the start button itself and secondly, we will create a new meteor which will start falling towards the bottom of the screen. The starting point of the meteor can be a random point on the x-axis, so we choose values 40 to 320 so that it doesn't touch the edges of the canvas. For the y-axis, we set it slightly lower than the top edge of the canvas and hence we choose 40. Now to make the meteor to continuously fall towards the bottom, we set its y-coordinate speed to 200. Next, we need to code what happens when the meteor touches the bottom edge. On touching the bottom edge, the meteor disappears, hence we remove the meteor sprite. Also, a new meteor spawns at the top again, so we repeat the codes for creating the meteor here again. The last step is to code what happens if the ship collides with the meteor. When this happens, the game gets over, so we remove the meteor sprite and show the game over sprite.
We also stop all movements on the canvas. After waiting for 3 seconds, we need to restart the game. So we show the start sprite once again and hide the game over sprite. This is how the completed code looks. Now let's test our game. As you can see all the controls are working fine. The start button appears once again after 3 seconds. Our space game works perfectly. This brings us to task 3. Write the codes for the space game to make your game work. That was such a wonderful experience building our own game, right? We can build additional features in our game to make it more interesting. For example, we can give a point to the player every time the ship dodges a meteor. You can increase the speed of the falling meteor throughout the game so that the difficulty level of the game increases and so on. We can do so much more by learning to code. Let's now put our learning to the test by taking a short quiz. What will happen with the following block? Pause the video and try to answer. The answer option is C. Executes the codes below when a given sprite collides with the another specific sprite. Hope you got that right. In the next episode, we will be creating a mole mash game and learning all about functions. Isn't that exciting? Till then, stay tuned. This is Ayush signing off. Bye.